Today on Listen Up, fear economics. Money's tight and people are afraid. Very afraid? How are they coping? Next. Welcome to Listen Up, a Christian perspective on news and a perspective that takes you deeper. I'm Lorna Duick. We're now several months into the worst recession the world has seen in decades. And while many of us are getting tired of the steady stream of bad economic reports, there is good news if you look for it, like a reordering of our values, away from material things and towards things that really count, family, friends, and those less fortunate. Today, we're exploring the spiritual terrain of living with less. But first, Ricky Ratliff went in search of some creative solutions to dealing with economic uncertainty. Here's her report. I've seen a significant decrease in my pays over the last few months, so I've had to cut back on my expenses. I've taken up another job to make sure that just in case something happens, then I do have a second income. I've actually called my insurance company, asked for a cheaper quote. Um, I've asked, I've phoned my um, credit card company to see if I can get a lower rate, and I've definitely cut back on, um, on uh, my cable. Can't really travel as much as we used to, that's for sure. Um, definitely buying different types of groceries. No name doesn't seem so bad anymore. And companies are capitalizing on this shift in consumer spending. The idea that less is more has become a new focus for marketing and ad campaigns trying to reach a suddenly savvy audience. This ad for Canadian Tire invites the consumer to have a day at the spa. But, in a clever move, they're inviting you to bring the spa to your home, and for hundreds less. Internationally, best-selling author and columnist Rebecca Eckler has also found herself trimming the fat from her budget, and she's writing about it. In a recent series for the National Post, she comically exposes the new trends that she's created for herself in this recession. Rebecca invited us into her home for an inside look at how she's walking the talk. It's not that I never thought about money, but I didn't really have to worry about money. Um, and now I think, yeah, I, I actually have to worry about it. Um, so I kind of pick, pitched this idea. Um, and I think I wanted to call it Recession Princess or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they decided to call it the Cutback Girl. So I've been Cutback Girl. And so in what ways has Cutback Girl found herself tightening her belt a little in these economic times? Cutback Girl... Basically, whenever she steps foot out of the house, thinks about um, cutting back. So whether it's going to a coffee shop, um, going to Starbucks, I, I order um, a kid's hot chocolate, <laughs> it, and I ask for a grande cup so I could um, fill it up more with milk. Cutting back has never sounded so shameless. But for Rebecca, there's no shame when it comes to saving money. Literally, I was the type of person who never even opened my statements. I never looked at anything. And now that I'm paying attention and I see where I spend money, I mean, I would go out um, and spend, you know, $50, $60 a day. And just by the end of the day, look in my purse and be like, I, there's no money left. I have to go to the bank machine. So I was going to the bank machine every day. And then even thinking about that and how I went to other banks that weren't mine and suddenly all those $1.50 service charges add up over the month to, you know, $50. I'm really starting to notice every little little thing. Every little thing like that expensive coffee brand she loves so much. So welcome to Cafe Eckler, where the service is friendly and the menu is cheap. Okay, Rebecca, tell me how much money we're saving here. You were saying that this was, this was going to cost 30 cents to make this at-home latte, but if you were go, to go to a designer coffee shop, how much would it cost you on average? It would probably cost me at, at least $4 an order, $4 okay. a coffee. Yes. So how much savings are we talking about over a year? Um, if I do the math correctly, it's about $1,500 a year, and I've been doing that for at least a decade. So that's about $15,000 wow. on coffee, on water with, or milk, and um, I would never finish it either. Mm -hmm. So half of it would be tossed away. So it's just like I threw $7,000 in the garbage. And the money she's not throwing away is hanging in her closet. Rebecca, you're taking us where 
most people haven't gone before, and this is into the depths of your closet. Now, when's the last time you've actually taken a good look at uh, all the great stuff that you have in here? Well, ever since this cutback girl lifestyle of mine. So literally I've gone into it uh, a lot recently, mm -hmm. um, but definitely just in the past couple months. And I've found things that are like treasures. Stowed away treasures, now unburied, that add up to hundreds and thousands of bucks. But the savings don't end there. This author, an avid reader, admits she's long overdue to begin checking out books from her own personal collection. Before I would go into a bookstore and buy usually between three and five books in one shot, which I mean could sometimes happen every other week. Um, and now um, I think about what I'm buying mm -hmm. a lot more. And speaking of bringing the spa home. Well, these are all creams that I have gathered over the years from various spas. So I'm saving money by not um, going out and buying new products when I probably have it already at home. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, so, and I'm using everything down to its very last drop. So if I have to scrape the bottom of this cream with my tongue, I shall do it. <laughs> In her efforts to make do with what she has, Rebecca gives us a fresh take on scraping the barrel when times get tough. Getting the skinny on solutions during a lean economy. For Listen Up TV, I'm Ricky Ratliff. When Listen Up returns, he's handled billions of savings and will now tell us that what hurts might actually be good for you. Jonathan Wellen, next. I hope it's a moral wake up call. I mean, I think uh, there's, there's tremendous ethical implications. And, uh, you know, right now, the way we have been functioning is spending the next generation's wealth. 